burn in our creep feed grinding operation, we slow down the feed rate, which helps, but only somewhat and only for a little while and then things sometimes even get worse. Is there something else we can do? Okay, let's take a look at a uh, graph I put together in the grinder's toolbox. It's a theoretical graph of what the grinding temperature would be under different sets of grinding conditions. If we were creep feed grinding, let's say hardened steel, uh, with an aluminum oxide wheel with decent cooling to begin with and let's say we're taking a one mil depth of cut 40 thou depth of cut and let's change the feed rate so we're either going slow or a little bit faster a little faster for that one millimeter depth of cut I've calculated the theoretical temperature in the grinders toolbox for different feed rates and what we've done is plotted it versus the specific material removal rate Specific material removal rate is the depth of cut times the feed rate. And in this case, we varied it for a fixed depth of cut, but various feed rates. So let's start with the guy in black. Uh, let's start with the black curve. And what we see on this one, what we have is a sharp dress. So let's assume we dress the wheel sharp. Let's assume we've chosen our grit penetration depth, which is a function of our wheel speed, our feed rate, our depth of cut so that the grits are taking a decent bite into the workpiece. If they take a decent bite into the workpiece, they're going to do more cutting and less rubbing. We're going to have a more efficient process in terms of materi uh, removing material, and we're going to have less rubbing and therefore less heat. So if we do that, we have the black curve, and what we see is, okay, as we increase feed rate, as we increase material removal rate, the temperatures start to go up as we'd expect, because we're removing more material, generating more heat. And we start at the end at around a uh, material removal rate of 22. We have a temperature of well, below 500 degrees C. Now, in a lot of steels, uh, hardened steels, high-speed steels, the temperature where thermal damage occurs, or the temperature where burn occurs, depends on the material. But we start to get residual tensile stresses at around 4, 5, 600 degrees C. We start to get over-tempering of the material, softening of the material. Depends on the hardness of the material, depends on the material. But for steels, we're looking at around 5, 600 degrees C. Uh, we start to get rehardening burn, where we cross the austenitizing temperature and get a phase change in the material, or the white layer, some people call it. That begins at around 7, 750, 800 degrees C. So let's say our safe temperature is 600 degrees C. And if we're below that, we're OK in terms of grinding burn. So if we have a sharp wheel and we have a decent grip penetration depth and decent cooling, then we can really push things hard and still stay below that 600 degrees C. But let's say that the operator dresses the wheel dull. He's doing single point dressing. He takes maybe too small a depth of cut. Maybe his traverse speed on his diamond is too small. So he doles down those grits. I see this all the time with companies who make the classic mistake of choosing a grit size that's too large to achieve the surface finish that they want and therefore they cope and they get that surface finish that they want by dressing the wheel too dull. So let's say to achieve the surface finish they want they should be using a 100 mesh wheel. They have a 60 mesh wheel. The operator says, ah, don't worry about it boss. I can, I can fix that. He dresses the wheel dull. So now he is getting that good surface finish but his grits are dull. They're going to rub more and generate more heat. That's given by the curve in blue. So what we can see uh, with the curve in blue is that if his wheel is dull, then again, as his material removal rate goes up, as his feed rate goes up, he has higher temperatures. But in this case, he can only get to around a material removal rate or a specific material removal rate of about 10 square millimeters per second. Or in this case, he's got a feed rate of around 10 millimeters a second or around 24 inches a minute. That's as far as he can get there before he starts to get burned. Now, what do people do when they start to get burned? Well, they slow down their feed rate. 
So that takes us back down the blue curve. Okay, well, we're lowering, t lowering temperatures there, so that's okay. Our cycle time is going to go up, but we are lowering temperatures. However, if we slow down our feed rates, what we should do is slow down our wheel speed so that we still get a decent grit penetration depth, so that those grits continue to bite out of the workpiece. But a lot of times people don't. They slow down the feed rate, they keep the same wheel speed. So now what happens is that their grit penetration depth gets small. So now we've got a dull wheel and we've got a small grit penetration depth. A small grit penetration depth means lots of rubbing, lots of rubbing means more heat. That takes us to the curve in red. So let's say the guy dressed the wheel dull and he slowed down his feed rate and now he's got a small grit penetration depth. Now he's got two things working against him and he can only get to down below five millimeters a second, down below 11.8 inches a minute before he starts to get burned. He complains about his long cycle time, but he's got a dull wheel and he's got a low grit penetration depth. He's going to get burned at a low material removal rate. Now let's take it a step further and let's say he's got bad cooling. Creek feed grinding, we got to have good cooling because of the long arc length. So now we've gone to the green curve where, wow, he can hardly remove any material at all before he starts to get burned because now he's got three things going against him. A dull dress, a uh, low grit penetration depth, and bad cooling. So people say, hey, what can we do to get shorter cycle times, big material removal rates? Three things you got to do, get all your ducks in a row. Number one, have a sharp dress if you have to go with a smaller grit size and get a sharp dress, go with that, but whatever you do, you've got to have a sharp dress uh, to, so that we get a lot of cutting. Number two, have a reasonable grit penetration depth. It's something I talk about in my grinding courses. We want to be somewhere between 0.5 to 1.5 microns, depending on the wheel, so that the grits take a bite out of the workpiece. And number three, have good cooling. And if we have all three of those things, you'll be amazed at how hard you can push things or how high your material removal rates can go and still not get burned.